So this past workshop, oh, I loved it. It was wonderful. You made one of your amazing little pearls of wisdom that just kind of falls out of your asshole. Uh. <laughs> and at one point you talked about how you had fantasized the workshops into being and that sexual fantasy is kind of was your method to manifest your goal of doing some kind of feminist based Absolutely. sexuality something fantasy is like I'm standing in front of a blank canvas what is that I'm gonna have a fantasy of what I want to create fantasy is at the heart of the creative process if we do not allow ourselves to imagine what we want to visualize what we would like to accomplish or to see what we want how we want to change the world that's all fantasy it's a, you, but it's we your, don't think of it I think in our culture we think of sexual fantasy as a sex act you know and we really limit it by the sex acts that we see so it's kind of affected by pornography and that's our <laughs> sexual fantasy I'm boom, 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 boom. I'm fucking I'm being fucked I'm watching fucking I'm yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Given a blow job, getting a blow job. No, it's like fantasy is it's the is the creative process. It is the creative process. How do we let our minds imagine? Because I think we all can do it as children, and somehow along the way, we get programmed to be on a schedule, to show up at a certain time, to do a certain perform a certain job. We become automatons, like little. We stop imagining. It, it stops being fun. Stop, we, stop, yeah, we, stop having, we stop having fun. I mean, you know, cleaning the apartment can be fun. I learned that when I first started smoking dope. <laughs> I would get stoned and clean the apartment, and it, it, had, it had a whole other... Well, whenever I do that, because Grayson loves the vacuum, so when I vacuum, I have Grayson and the dog in tow watching, and I do little dances for them, and we put on music, and it beca it's now become like this big bonding moment. And our fun, it's play. That's, yes, anything we do, we can turn it into play. I used to always vacuum in the nude. Oh, yeah, you're always naked, of course. Always <laughs> naked. And yes, you, and they had mirrors around the, so you'd see yourself and you'd do a little dance. Yeah. And it's fun. You can turn anything into, any routine can be a pleasure. Tell the story that we were talking about earlier of when you said that you didn't fantasize, because a lot of people write in and they go, I don't fantasize. <gasps> I'm with my friend over in my art studio. This is back in the, I don't know, 50s. It's 100 years ago. And I said to him, here I am an artist. I stand in front of a blank canvas day after day. And I said, you know, I don't fantasize because I was thinking in terms of a sexual fantasy. Mm -hmm. In other words, or I don't know what I was thinking of. And he said, yes, you do. You do it all the time. You're just not aware of it. And I said, I don't understand. And he said, all right. He said, look around the room. And I'm in my you know, art studio on 29. And I looked around and I thought, oh God, I said, it really needs, I gotta paint this place. And he said, there, that's a fantasy. That you projected an image, you have to paint this place. So he said, keep going. And so I looked around and I said, he says, what color? And I said, well, I want it all white. And then I want to build <laughs> uh, shelves over there for, you know, for the canvases. Lo and behold, a couple of months later, that's what happened. So then you make the connection that what you envision, imagine, you can manifest. But if you don't have the image, you can't. Yes. You can't, you can't, can't get there. You can't get there. And I did that with Grayson. I kept on manifesting this image of this blue-eyed boy. And the last year before I changed, made a major life change and moved forward, I kept on having, I had this image. and, 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 and it, I knew it was a goal. I knew it was somewhere I needed to get to. So I made changes in my life. And I did it. Now I have a blue-eyed boy. And you got a blue-eyed husband. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and I think that relates back to anything in our lives and especially orgasm. You know, when you divorced your husband, you said, I'm going to do sex. I'm going to go on this section. You, you had an image of living a lifestyle and you had an image of having these amazing orgasms. Well, it was it, it was perfect because when he came home that day from from work and you know, and we were talking about when men come home from work they're you know, oh, they're, <laughs> they're never happy, they're never upbeat and so he said, "Oh, he said I'm going to take up golf." And I said, "Oh, I'm going to take up sex." <laughs> you had an image, right? I'm going to manifest something. I'm and that was the beginning sex. 
of you going on this sexual yeah. journey yes. that has gotten you here. Yeah. I took up sex. <laughs> it began, it starts as a fantasy. Every painting, every drawing starts as a fantasy. Our lives are based on what we envision. It's so simple. Yeah, I was just going to say that. It sounds so simple. It sounds a little kumbaya, but I think it's true. You know, I would imagine myself, I remember imagining graduating college and law school summa cum laude, and I did. I would imagine conversations or people seeing me a certain way or accomplishing things, and then it would happen. Well, I did, the, yeah, I did the similar. I did, I mean, I, well, I never fantasized that I was going to write. I mean, that really blew my mind. Uh, but I saw myself being a famous artist, a famous artist, not just an artist, famous. Well, I'm a famous jerk off artist. <laughs> that counts, right? <laughs> <laughs> the other day I was writing an email to a friend and I said, now I'm rich and famous because I invented masturbation. <laughs> it's not bad. Something bad to have on your headstone. <laughs> the mother of masturbation. I invented it. Absolutely. I feel that way. I feel like I invented it. Because no one else was talking about it. No one else was dealing with it. So I invented it. And look, aren't I having a good time? Because you fantasized body sex. I did. I did. I had this fantasy. Now that was a sexual fantasy. Some of the things I manifested, they started as a sexual fantasy. That's even like a more amazing and more exciting to think about that. So I was having, you know, I'd have my vibrator and I'd be buzzing away and I'd go, I can't just imagine that I'd have a group of women. They'd come here, there'd be a group <laughs> of women, and we would have, uh, we would all have an orgasm, simultaneous orgasm, and it would raise the energy of the building. And everybody in the building would start to oh, get this shot of sexual energy. And, and everyone it, would just start touching themselves and having Oh, time. and having sex. And they were, had, they were fucking in the foyer. They were down in the basement, in the laundry room, fucking, you know, in the elevators. It was just this. <laughs> and the whole building levitated. Almost. <laughs> Your doormen always love when we have a workshop on the weekends. <laughs> so there might be levitating in the basement. <laughs> so it was like, it was like Master said, where do you find these beautiful women? And I said, they find me. I, you manifested them. I did, I meant. So the question is, what do you want to manifest? Tell us. Tell us what you want to manifest. And I bet it comes true. But you have to put some sex energy into it. I think that's a big part of it. Mm -hmm. You should have the image, and then you put a few orgasms behind it. Voila.